Gideon chose to trust God, made himself available to be used by God, and God gave him the victory. Which leads me to my biggest life lesson that I learned in this entire trip. God isn't as interested in our abilities as he is in our Have you ever felt led to do something for God, but also felt unqualified or inadequate to be able to do it? You felt like you didn't have the necessary talent or the skills or the knowledge, or perhaps your past mistakes would prevent you from doing something good for God. Well, this happened to me about 20 years ago when my former church that I was attending scheduled a mission trip to Honduras. And I want to share the three big life lessons that God taught me through that experience about faith and trusting in Him. See, throughout the Bible, you can find multiple examples of people who were called to do something for God, but were also riddled with fears and doubts and anxiety. And one of those that I want to talk about today is Gideon, which we find his story in Judges chapter 6 through chapter 8. Now, there's a lot to unpack with the story of Gideon, so I'm only going to focus on a few verses. But basically, it was a foreign nation, Midian, that was oppressing the Israelites. They were destroying their crops, stealing their livestock, and just being a nuisance. And this is where we pick up with the story of Gideon, where he's hiding in a wine press out of fear. So let's look at chapter 6, verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Then Gideon kind of got sarcastic with him in verse 13. And then verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Gideon's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Throughout my life, I find myself a lot like Gideon, where God is leading me to talk to someone or pray with someone or go on a mission trip or teach a Sunday school, and I would question it over and over and over again, and then I would just be consumed with fears and doubts and end up, most of the time, not even doing it. But if you go back to verse 15 and what Gideon said, his reply after what the angel of the Lord told him, he says, how can I save Israel? And he completely missed the point. When God is calling us to do something, he's not expecting us to do it by ourselves. The angel of the Lord said in verse 12, the Lord is with you. And in verse 14, he says, am I not sending you? So Gideon wasn't being sent alone to do this by himself. Yet that's what he was thinking, that how am I going to be able to do this? Well, the same thing happened with me. When the Honduras trip was scheduled, I was excited. I got my passport. I got the necessary funds saved. But prior to two months before we left, I began to get riddled with fears and doubts. What would I be doing when I'm there? Would I be safe? Would I be getting along with the people that I'm with? How would I be able to function in a country that I don't speak the language? Would I even be useful? You see, that was the thing that I needed to learn, is I need to stop asking the I questions and trust in Him. He was leading me to go on this mission trip, and it wasn't about me. It was about Him. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now, God might not be calling you to rescue a nation, but he may be calling you to talk to someone at work or to pray with someone that you know that's in your neighborhood, or maybe it's a relative. But whatever it is, do not let fear and doubts imprison you and keep you from doing what God is asking you to do. Because if he's asking you to do it, he's going to be with you the entire way. Benjamin Franklin is credited with saying, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. If you go back to verse 15, Gideon is making the excuse that he is too insignificant to complete this task, where he says, I am the least in my family. Once I found out I would be with a group of guys helping build a radio station, the doubts and the fear started really kicking in. I don't have a construction background. I barely know how to use hammer and nails. These guys were bringing their wives, so is it going to be awkward for me to be the only single guy there? I Again, I don't know the language, so the doubts and the fears just really started piling up. I would have preferred helping the ladies teach vacation Bible school because that's something I would have been more comfortable with. However, God was more concerned with building my faith and reliance on Him than He was my comfort level. When we're operating in a place of safety and comfort, we are more prone to be self-reliant than reliant on God. So as a leap of faith, I set aside all my excuses and decided to go on this trip and just trust God with the details. So what exactly is faith? Faith is taking an action without any physical proof that it will work or be successful. But it's also knowing deep in your heart, deep in the core of who you are, that everything will be okay because God is in control. Hebrews 11:6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Now, let's fast forward to chapter 8 where everything God said came true and Gideon was successful in defeating the Midianites. In Judges chapter 8, verse 22, it says, 
And the Israelites said to Gideon, rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. Gideon could have been totally consumed with fear and not trust God, and he would have missed out on this amazing miracle. Gideon chose to trust God, made himself available to be used by God, and God gave him the victory. Which leads me to my biggest life lesson that I learned in this entire trip. God isn't as interested in our abilities as he is in our availability. You know, I was full of fears, doubts, and excuses. I went on this trip to Honduras and I was completely amazed. Even though I was the odd man out, I ended up having to room with a local named Jacob, who was also our driver for the trip. And he spoke no English, I spoke no Spanish. Yet there was a camaraderie between us that could only be orchestrated by God. And there was odd moments too, like when I got locked out of my hotel room and I knocked on the door and he answered it completely nude. And that was a little, <laughs> a little weird. But uh, at the end, the last day of the trip, I ended up giving him my English-Spanish Bible to help him in his quest to learn English as well as learn more about God. And then going to the site where the radio station was being built, I ended up working most of the time with this young teenage boy that was from there. Undeterred by the age and language barriers, we were able to accomplish all the tasks that we were given. One way I overcame the fact that I couldn't speak Spanish was I got a hat made and made some shirts with scriptures on it written in Spanish. This was something I continued to do when I started going to the Philippines with my wife and doing outreach there as well. This made me realize that God can do incredible things through us if we show up where he wants us to be and just trust him. And this really cemented Proverbs 3, 5, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You may never get called to go on a long or short-term mission trip, but for sure he will call you to do things for him right where you are. If you get that tugging in your heart to do or say something to someone in your life, might be at work, might be at school, could be amongst your family members, could be a stranger at the store. Don't embrace fear. Follow through and trust God. No matter what the task is, all we have to do is make ourselves available to his call and trust him to complete his will through us. Remember, we are just a vessel that God uses to accomplish his will here on earth, and he is faithful. Have you ever had struggles with fears and doubts, or perhaps a time where you took a leap of faith and God did something amazing? Please share those in the comments below. But until next time, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.